Hi, my name is Josef and I'm one of the developers of Fortis, a forecasting time series framework. Today I will show you how to use Fortis by conducting some case studies. I will demonstrate Fortis on two data sets in these case studies. Once for the Metro Interstate Traffic Volume dataset. In this dataset, we have counts of cars that pass a certain street in the United States of America in a specific time step, so for one hour, which we can see here. I'll show you these datasets shortly because there you can get an idea how a CSV file should look like that Fortis can process. So, as we always work with time series in Fortis, we need a time information. In this case, the column date with this hourly data. Then we of course always need a target column that we want to predict. In this case, the traffic volume, the count of cars that pass the street. And then additionally, we can have a certain number of features, so information that can help the model to produce good forecasts. In this case, we have two kinds of features. On one hand, weather-related features, so how cloudy this day was, um, if the snow fell or if we had rain on that day, and the temperature, among others. And additionally, we have a calendar information. So if there was a holiday on this day or not, and if there was a holiday, which holiday? As we can already see here in the first line, in this data set, we have some missing values. So rows that do not contain um, information. This we have to impute later in Fortis. And Fortis does this automatically, and I show you in a bit more detail later. The other data set I will use is the bike sharing data set. Here we have a number of bikes that got shared on a specific day as a target variable, variable and also here again the time information. Here we have a daily resolution, as you can see. As features, we again have two types of features. On one hand, the weather information, again, like temperature, humidity, etc. And calendar information, so if there is a, if this certain day was a working day or not, um, if, again, we had a holiday or not, and so on and so forth. In this data set, as we can see when we scroll down, we have no missing values, so we do not have to impute this one. And now I will go to a terminal to show you how we can execute Fortis. Now I am in a terminal on one of our servers. I'm already in a Docker container, as you can see right here. If you're not familiar with Docker and don't know how to set up a Docker container, I recommend to have a look at our Docker installation and setup tutorial, which we also provide as a video. There we give a detailed step-by-step -step, uh, explanation how to create a Docker container. When we are right in this container and in our Fortis folder and we have a look what's inside this folder with ls then we can see our two important files that we need right now on one hand the run.pi file which we will execute soon and on the other hand the dataset specific config file here in this dataset specific config file that you may be recognized from the code walkthrough video, we set specific characteristic values that are 
always um, characteristic, uh, as I already mentioned, for a specific data set that we use in our studies. So let's have a look in this file. With WIM dataset specific config.ini, we can have a look at it. And there we see here or here the name of the dataset we want to use. As I already mentioned, we will on one hand use the Metro Interstate Traffic Volume dataset. So let's have a closer look there. There we set the volumes for counter. So this is a calendar feature that adds a counter um, for special days they may, that may have a high influence on the predictions. So for this data set, the Christmas Day, the Columbus Day, the Independence Day, etc. Also, we set the column that contains these values, in this case the Cal Holiday column. Then we set some columns that are important for the statistical feature engineering, so the columns for lags, the columns for rolling mean, and the column for lags rolling mean. Also, what is very important for this data set is we set imputation here to true. As you see before, Metro Interstate Traffic data set contains missing values. That's why we have to impute them and this, that's why we set it here to true. We do not want to resample, we weekly resample the data set. And here we, we set the columns that contain strings and the columns that contain floats. This is important for the pre-processing of the data set. And we pass the column that contains the time information and we pass the format of the time. In this case, case age for hourly data. We pass the length of the seasonal periods, in this case 24, because we have daily data. A day consists of 24 hours, that's why 24 is equal to one season and in this line we can set a regular expression or multiple regular expressions that then sort the feature sets. So for chips searches for this regular expressions and then creates feature sets accordingly to this regular expressions. I will explain this in a more detail for the other data set. Here I pass all the features that we want to have in Fortis and for the predictions are all the features that are important for the forecasts. This is relevant when we maybe have a data set with a lot of irrelevant columns, so features, and we only need a few that are relevant for the forecasts. Here we could pass categorical columns and here we pass the length or the, the number of the maximal seasonal lags for the statistical feature engineering. And also very important, we pass the target column here. In this case, the traffic volume. When we now have a look at the other data set, the bike sharing data set, we have the same characteristics that we have to set here. Maybe interesting to have a look is imputation which we set to false because we do not have missing values in this data set and what's also interesting is that we have now 365 seasonal periods as we have a daily resolution in a year which represents one season consists of 365 days. Here we pass two regular expressions for the feature sets namely weather and cal which then means we create three feature sets. One feature set containing all features, the feature set full, which gets also created for every data set, independent if we set some regex here or not. And additionally, one feature set that contains only weather information, so all the features that have weather in their column name and another feature set that contains all the calendar information. 
So all the columns that contain the regex cal. That's all I want to show right now for the dataset specific config file. Let's now have a look how our command should look like with which we can execute Fortis. For this, let's step one level up in the structure and have a look how to execute this run.pi file. We can pass certain arguments to Fortis. Most of these arguments have default values that fit pretty good in most of the cases. To have a look into this default values of the arguments, we can either look into the run.pi file or we type in python3 minus m fortis dot run minus minus pal. After waiting some seconds, we can see an output with all the arguments we can pass to Fortis um, when calling run and if they are defined for most of the arguments, also the standard or default value, like right here for example. But let's clear our screen again and have a look at the command exactly that we have to pass. I already prepared these commands to prevent typos, which may be misleading or confusing in this tutorial. But I will go through every argument step by step and explain what they do and what they mean. So you already saw how to call the run file by typing in python3 minus m for this dot run. Then we have to specify the dataset we want to use. In our case, the bike sharing dataset. Additionally, to the dataset, we need to say for this which section of the config file we want to use. In our case, we want to use the section bike sharing, which is the section that holds all the characteristics we defined before, like I showed you before. Then we can pass the models we want to execute. In our example, I just want to execute XGBoost, but we could also pass multiple models here. If we do not pass any models and use the default value, the default value is the string all, which then executes all the models included in Fortis. Normally, as Fortis is created or designed for seasonal time series, the validation and test set are one or multiple seasons of this time series. In our example, I don't want to do that. That's why I pass here no seasonal val test. So now not one or multiple seasons get used for a validation or test set, but a certain percentage of the data set where the default value is 20%. The standard data split is time series cross-validation, as we work with time series. But in our case, I want to use cross-validation, which I can pass here with dash dash data split. We can also define if we do not want to perform dimensionality reduction with principal component analysis at all, or if we want to use Octuna to optimize whether we use it, or don't, depending on our data set, which works better. I can want to optimize the PCA and can do that by setting this bool value to true at dash dash PCA transform. At the end, I also want to set the number of trials that Optuna performs, in this case 10. Now, as we have all our arguments for our study, for our experiments, 
we can execute this command. We need to wait some seconds and then we get some output of the pre-processing of the feature engineering that calendar and statistical features got added, that the data set is too short to add seasonal lags and that the data set is finally pre-processed. And the optimization start for XG boost and the feature set data set full. Now the Optuna will optimize the hyperparameters in 10 trials. Right now we are on trial 7 and then the testing happens. I will take a break here and come back as soon as the optimization and the training procedure is done. So, welcome back to this tutorial. Now the optimization and the testing is done. And we can see that we have some nice printouts. So Fortis gives us information on each model that we executed, on the feature sets that were executed, and then for each feature set we see the best hyperparameters, we see some evaluation metrics and also some runtime metrics. A nice feature that Fortis offers is that if a certain hyperparameter optimization does not work on the test set, for example, because it's just a weird combination of hyperparameters or stuff like that, then Fortis automatically executes the second best hyperparameter optimization and see if that works. Here, by retries zeros, we can see that the best hyperparameter optimization worked and we did not need any retries with second or third best hyperparameter optimization. So, after we conducted the study, let's do the second one with the Metro Interstate Traffic Volume dataset. But first, let's clear our screen. For the second dataset, I also already prepared the command, which I just pasted in here. But again, I will go through the arguments. But the arguments that we want to change here compared to the default values are not that much. I just want to take the default values. The only thing that I change here is I want to use another model, in this case ARD. And of course we use the dataset Metro Interstate Traffic Volume with the corresponding config file, the Metro Interstate Traffic Volume section of the config file. Again. I want to run 10 tries. So let's execute this command. After waiting for some seconds, we can see that the dataset is already pre processed because in some time before I already executed this dataset and I pre processed it and the file got saved and loaded again. So I do not need process it. Need to pre-process it again, which saves us some time. So we can start immediately with the optimization. Again, like in the video before, I will take a short break here and wait till the optimization and the testing is done and we'll come back soon. See you then. So welcome back to this tutorial, case studies. As we can see, our optimization and testing is done again for the, for the second experiment. And as before, Fortis outputs us some information, so the best hyperparameters, some evaluation metrics, the runtime metrics, and also if we have retries. And again, we did not have any retries, so the best hyperparameter optimization did work on the test set. Here we only get some results for the dataset full feature set. Why? Because, as you remember, we did not set 
any regular expression for other feature sets. That's why only the standard feature set or data set full was created. So the last thing I want to show you in this tutorial is the structure of the results folder. So I already changed the current directory to docs source tutorial tutorial data and here in this folder we can see this results folder. So let's step into it. In this results folder we have two subfolders are ARD and XGBoot because these are the two, these two models which we um, executed for just with. When we now have a look at, for example, in the ARD folder, we can see we have two subfolders which are named with the feature set data set full that we took there and also with the date and time uh, on which we started the experiment. There are two in here because additionally to this experiment, to this case study video, I started for this before that again. That's why that's where this photo got created. For the experiment right here that we created now, we this folder is relevant. So let's step into it. I just Copy it right here and then paste it in. And let's have a look what's in here. In here we have the Octuna database, then some runtime overview. This is an overview over the Optuna optimization. Then the final model test results CSV file. Here we have the results of the testing phase also of every periodical refitting cycle of frequency. Then the best model with or the best the model with the best working hyperparameters gets saved here as the unfitted model, in this case trial 8, because trial 8 was this Optuna trial with the best working hyperparameters, and also the validation results of this trial get saved. Then the final retrained model also gets saved, additional to the unfiltered model. And then we have the final model feature importance CSV file. This is a file in which we save the importance of single features or columns for the prediction task for the specific model. Not all models can provide such a feature importance but for this model to can, like ARD, we save this also in this file, in this folder. And another nice feature that Fortress offers is that it automatically creates a plot with the real values and the predictions on the test set for the best working refitting frequency, which gets saved here as a PNG file. This name of this file is built up by the name of the model, then the feature set, and then the best refitting cycle, which in this case was complete. So the whole training set got used for refitting. As I already mentioned, if you have more, uh, if you are interested in more information about periodic refitting, I, I, I um, suggest you to read our paper where we provide more information in depth. So that's all for now for this tutorial with the case studies. I hope you enjoyed it and we are always happy for other people to contribute and further develop for this. So feel free to work for us and contact us. And then I wish you to have a lot of fun with Fortis and see you soon in another tutorial, which I really recommend you to have a look at to get a better understanding and deeper knowledge. So I hope you better understand how to use Fortis with this case studies and see you soon.